Hello everyone. Uh, I want to start by thanking CIC for offering this amazing platform, you know, for ours from very different fields to share the, our progress and our research uh, on this common theme motivated by the COVID-19 pandemic. So this is a product supported by chemistry, uh, self-chemistry, chemical measurement and imaging. So we are relatively late. We started around June or July uh, to work on this project because at the beginning, I thought the existing tools and PCR-based uh, method, which is a lab analysis technology, would be more than adequate to offer a good uh, uh, yes and no answer to uh, for this qualitative uh, testing needs. So it was not until um, all the false, false positive and false negative results being reported of all those tools being used uh, under emergency use authorization, we realized there are fundamental things we can contribute. So our goal is to develop a method that can be further developed into a tool that it need to be highly accurate in the meanwhile it need to be low cost, easy to operate, and offer results quick, instead of taking multiple steps and you know, from how whatever sample you take, many steps down the road, you get a readout. We really want to simplify this procedure to speed up the process. Researchers have been working on developing better tools for analysis, basically nonstop, way before this pandemic hit us. There are fundamental reasons why these are very, such a challenging task. Um, for this specific, specific product, the ultimate sensitivity we want to, we need or we can achieve will be detecting a single virus. And we really want the detection to be specific. The most specific to the virus would be the generic material. In this case, is RNA sequences specific to the uh, virus. So fundamentally, there are problems to achieve this kind of a goal. One is the signal associated with single molecules. They are generally very, very, very weak. And because every measurement, there is noise associated with it. And it can be random noise, meaning there's nothing we can control of. And there can be sampling errors, especially when we are handling the samples with very low quantity of the target. Of course, there will be human mistakes and more or less is going to occur, especially when you handle the sample multiple times, like what happens down here. So to avoid, uh, to overcome the signal to noise limitations, all the our currently adopted tools are almost exclusively based on sample amplification. These include lab tools like PCR and um, almost all the fast testing tools that, that I'm aware of. Right, so you just need it to amplify, grow the signal sample more so that the signal is strong enough to be measured. So what we decided to do is we want to tackle the problem from that, that another angle is called some signal amplification. So instead of grow the samples, we try to improve or amplify the signal. So this is the core of the method or concept. Hopefully my explanation makes sense. So you look at this uh, faucet and remember water flows through when you switch this one on. So that's the principle we operate when we design this uh, tool. What you are seeing is down here is an electrode. We can read the signal out. And there are DNA aptamers in here. It folded in a way that uh, this molecule is far away from the electrode. So there's no signal. You, you do not see a signal. Now, in this loop structure, there's a segment that is in perfect complementary to the specific RA sequences, and in this case, the SARS-CoV-2. Right. So when this RA is presented in the sample, it's going to bind to this thermodynamically favorable, and then it's going to unfold it so that you know, after the unfolding, this molecule is going to be close enough to the electrical surface that turns the signal on. So this is a principle that has been used for many years, and here are the credits to the earlier work. But the signal associated with the single probe is not strong enough for us to read the signal out directly. And if you only have one or a handful of variety in it, that's just not going to give you enough signal. 
So our contribution is to introduce this redox cycling uh, mechanism. It's basically when this molecule is undergoing electron transfer reactions, in the meantime, there is a secondary reaction going on in the solution, so it can turn this molecule back so that this molecule works as a tunnel or mediator. So it allows the signal to go from all of this here to through here. So it's almost like you are using the VRI as a handle to switch the signal on and then water flow, and that gives you the signal. And in case you are interested, uh, here are what, how the, what the data looks like. I'm going to skip all the details on how to read them and understand them. These are actually from the earlier work when we work on microRNAs. So these are published. Basically, you see a quantum correlation uh, from the measured signal to the sample of target concentrations. In different zones, there are different uh, correlation profiles that allows you to do a quantitation. And here are the results we have so far. We already pushed the detection limit down to atom molar. This is 10 to minus 18. And that translates into a few thousand molecules in a few minutes. And then remember, we amplify the signal directly. So this is a one-step detection. You can actually directly read the signal out down to this level. And there are rooms to improve. We are actually having some success to push it down to zipto molar concentration range. Or we are seeing signals from uh, tens or hundreds of molecules uh, in tens of minutes. Okay, so that's uh, being wrapped up, and hopefully we will be ready to report that uh, soon. This is a fundamental product that generally takes uh, many years to develop. So, although this one-year project is approaching an end, we surely will continue to work on this direction because the method and this uh, technology can be quite versatile to tackle other type of hardwares or microRNAs. Um, so currently we are trying to improve the results through modern assimilation and experimentally we need to establish parameters to work on to be ready for, to tackle real life samples. And this is a prototype device we made in house. And obviously we cannot make a million of them. Um, so we need to, or someone need to figure out the engineering aspect for mass production. But at least uh, the benchmark number you saw in the last page, I would say that's pretty impressive. That's way beyond my in initial expectations. So uh, these are not trivial and very technical challenging products. I need to give credit to my uh, team and my collaborator, Dr. Kumar. And this is Jonathan, he is a PhD with me, currently he's working as a postdoc. And Sarah just started, she will be working on some modeling and simulations and Mei Jun worked on this project at the beginning and then he took an offer um, that she cannot resist. Again, I want to thank uh, NSF Chemical Environment Imaging uh, for the support of this uh, product and thank you for your attention.